Hello everyone, welcome back to Infinity Physics. This is the new video lecture series in which I will try to discuss maximum number of topics in a single lecture so you can gain maximum learnings. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about chapter 8 motion. So what is a motion? So before discussing the motion and the related terms that are going to come in the chapter, first we need to discuss what is the branch in which branch we study the motion generally this topic is in the textbook of science of course it belongs to the science now again the science is divided these science is divided into many groups uh, physics chemistry biology mathematics many groups are there then again the physics is divided into many types simple here mechanics then space astrophysics physics right so all there are many branches are there but this motion is related to this particular branch mechanics so again mechanics is divided into three part statics kinematics and dynamics science you know that right it is a study of the nature of all the things similarly a branch of science which deals with the study of the nature and the related phenomena, the phenomena that is happening in the nature. Today you are able to see me through the mobile. So why? Due to the physics. This board is stuck here due to the physics. We can write here on the black on the white board due to the physics because due to the friction this stick. So why this particular substance sticks here? Okay. Why there is a, why sky is blue? Why in the night? space is black the sky is black why the earth is revolving so all these things we study in physics in physics and again the physics divide into many branches and in one of the branch one of the branch of physics is a mechanics that deals with the motion and the state of rest if the object is moving right or the object is at rest then we study its nature in that condition in a branch called mechanics now in a mechanics there are again three sub branch statics kinematics and dynamics statics means if the object is at rest stationary then what are the kinds of forces that act on that object for example this marker pen is at rest here so what are the forces acting on this marker pen one there is a gravitational force which is pulling it downward one the force that is i am applying in on the up in the upward direction so it is stable here right so what are the forces acting on the object and what are the other physical quantities related to that object that object is at rest so that branch of science is called statics now if the objects are in motion if i am throwing this marker then the object this marker will move with what velocity what acceleration it will cover how much distance in how much time so that type of things we study in a branch called kinematics here we study the motion we only study the motion we are not studying the cause of the motion here we, we will not study the cause of the motion if earth is revolving then at what speed the earth is revolving right so here we will study but why earth is revolving that we will not study here that we will study in dynamics in dynamics we study the motion of an object with its cause why why the object is moving right so these things need to be clear so here this chapter 8 is particularly belongs to this kinematics and statics because here we will also study the uh, conditions of the rest and also if the object is in motion then at what speed what is the acceleration what distance it will cover so generally uh, the 90 percent of the chapter belong to the kinematics which is a branch of physics and physics is a branch of science let us discuss about motion so what is motion motion means if the object is changes its position with respect to its surrounding with the time then the object is said to be in motion that is suppose for before understanding the motion let me 
try to make you understand the state of rest. After understanding the state of rest, you will be easily able to understand the motion. See, I am here standing very steady. So, according to you, according to the uh, persons, according to the people who are watching me right now, they will find that I am at rest. That is, I am stationary. I am not moving at all. I am not changing my position. So, if I am not changing my position with respect to this surrounding, then I, I can say that I am at rest. And the people who are observing around me, they will find that I am at rest. Similarly, you are sitting in a train and a train is moving. But beside you, your friend is sitting. You will find that you and your friend both are moving in a train. But according to you, according to your frame of reference, your friend and you are at rest because you are not moving with respect to one another. And also, I am at rest here. If you try to go out of the space and observe me, you will find that the earth is moving with a very large speed about 1600 km per hour or 16,000 right. So that much very large speed with the, the earth is moving with that very large speed revolving right. So you will find that the earth is moving. So if I am steady here but if you go out of the earth then you will find that I am moving right. So now your frame of reference, your observing point from where you are observing is the space. Before that you were here, you were observing me from this surroundings, so you will find that I am at rest. So your frame of reference, your observing point defines the state of rest. So before defining the state of motion or state of rest, we need to define this frame of reference and that frame of reference is called the surrounding. That is from where you are observing. So when, when you are sitting in a train with your friend, you find that you are at rest with your friend. But now the person who is outside the train on the platform find that you and your friend both are moving, both are in the motion. But according to you, your friend was at rest because with respect to you, your friend was not moving. So your frame of reference was that compartment. Now the person who is outside will find that his frame of reference is platform from where he is observing. Right. So, the frame of reference, so before determining the state of rest or motion, before defining the state of rest or motion, you should, you have to define, you need to define the frame of reference. Frame of reference means surrounding, frame of reference from, it means the position, the place from where you are observing the motion, right. So, that is the frame of reference. So, we can say that what is motion, now you can clearly understand change in position of an object with respect to its surrounding is known as motion that is the object is said to be in motion that is change in position of an object with respect to its surrounding with the time with the passage of time then we can say that the object is in motion now how we can define the state of rest if the object is not changing its position with respect to its surrounding, see, with respect to its surrounding is a very important line, right. So, if the object is not changing its position with respect to its surrounding with the passage of time, then we can say that that object is at rest. So, here the body is at rest, right. But the person who is in the space, if you observe with the telescope, then you will find that you all are moving with the earth, we are at not rest. Right. So, here my in my frame of reference this board is at rest. In my frame of reference this mobile stand, the mobile from where I am taking the uh, video is at rest. Right. So, now let us try to define some more important quantity which are called scalar and vector quantity. Also, uh, these rest and motion they are related means they are related to frame of reference they are not absolute absolute means the quantity you can define you can define the exact value of that quantity that quantities are said to be absolute but here the motion and the rest both the terms are relative term here the body is at rest according to me according to you 
but the person out of out of the earth will find that it is moving with the earth right so it is relative it depends upon the frame of reference from where you are observing similarly motion and rest both now what are scalar and vector quantity see if i ask you what is what is your mass suppose you say my mass or in your sense it is weight so it is 60 kg 60 kg very simple if i ask what is the volume of your water bottle that you are using you will say the volume of my water bottle is 750 ml or we can say it is 0.750 liter if i ask you what is your height you will say my height is 5.7 or 5.5 feet right so here on in this all quantity i have only described a single term that is the number 60 kg which is a number this number is called magnitude this number is called the magnitude of that quantity so now to describing this quantity i need only one thing except this units except this units i need only a number that number is called the magnitude so mass 60 kg volume 750 ml right height 5.7 feet okay similarly what is the temperature right now so i said the temperature is equals to 36 degree or 37 degree celsius right so i need to describe only the numbers only the magnitude i not need to describe the direction so such type of quantities are called scalar quantity that is those quantity that can be only described with the help of the magnitude there is no need to describe its direction right so such type of quantities are called scalar quantity now suppose there is a box this is a box and i ask you please push this box and in which direction you will push you can push this box in this direction you can push this box in this direction you can push this box in this direction in this direction in this direction also there are many possible ways and if i say if i ask you please apply a 100 newton of force then 100 newton that is the number but in which direction you will apply that force right so you can apply the force in this direction and in all this direction so i need to guide you with the direction please apply force towards the east so i need to specify the direction so such type of quantity to describe that quantity you need to describe or you need to give two number two things one is a magnitude that is the number 100 newton so 100 is a number and another thing direction so such type of quantities are called vector quantities so force is a vector quantity then displacement is a vector quantity velocity is a vector quantity acceleration is a vector quantity so i hope you have understood what are the scalar and vector quantities now let us try to define this quantities in a simple way so now let us try to define the term known as displacement and distance we will try to define both the quantity at the same time so it will be easy for you to understand so first let us try to define distance and here we will define displacement what is distance suppose you have started from your home right this is your home then you move to some point at your friend's home which is let us say 2 km away from you and with your friend here is your friend home and then you are moving to school so here is your school and let us say from the school the house it uh, the house is at uh, let us say from your friend's home the school is at uh, distance of 3 km so here how much total distance you have traveled 2 plus 3 2 plus 3 5 km so suppose in your cycle or in your bike there is a uh, there is a odometer odometer what is odometer 
odometer is a device which is used to measure the distance in bikes and in cars and all the vehicles you will find that which shows the number how much kilometer you have traveled so that odometer will read that you have traveled 2 kilometer plus 3 5 kilometer now again when you return back to your home so by dropping your friend here so again you are moving here so you have moved again 3 kilometer then again you are moving to your home that 2 kilometer so net distance you have covered that is the odometer will show this is 5 plus 5 5 plus 5 is equals to 10 kilometer so what is this this is the path length okay this is your path now if you try to stretch it so this is the path you will find that it is a 10 kilometer long so what is the distance distance is nothing the path travel so what is the definition of the distance it is the path travel by an object it is a very simple definition what is distance it is a path travel by an object now what is displacement with the same example let us try to define the displacement so displacement means it is the first it is the shortest distance what is displacement it is the shortest distance between the initial and final position of an object. What is displacement? It is the shortest distance between the initial and the final position of an object. So here, suppose again you have started from your home on the next day here is your home you have traveled for 2 kilometer to take your friend with you to lift your friend from there then from your friend's home you are moving to your school right which is 3 kilometer so the distance traveled by you is 2 plus 3 5 kilometer but what is your what was your initial position this what is your final position? This. So, the shortest distance, the shortest distance between the initial and the final position or in a very simple way, simple way we can say S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, I am not writing full, the straight line joining distance, remember, the straight line joining distance between the initial and the final position is called the displacement so this is the displacement right so how much you have displaced from your initial position so you have displaced by let us say 4 kilometer from your initial position so what is the shortest distance this is the shortest distance between your initial and final position Right, that is the here 4 kilometer. Now, suppose again you are returning back to your home. So, here 3 kilometer, then again 2 kilometer. So, net distance covered, net distance covered is 5 plus 5, 10 kilometer. But what is your displacement? How much you have displaced from your original position? So, you have displaced by initial position is home. Again, you are returning back to your home, the final position. So, this is your final position. So, what is the distance from your initial and final position? What is the distance between them? 0. So, in this case, again your displacement is 0. Right. So, what is the displacement? It is a simple definition. You have to consider definition every time. That is the shortest distance between the initial and the final position. And here, path travel by an object is called the distance. See, the distance is measured in meters. Similarly, the displacement is also measured in meter. Right? And uh, for larger distance, we use kilometer. For small distance, we use meter. And for small length, we use centimeter. So, the unit is same because both are length. Then, third, here in distance traveling, you, lo you don't need to see the direction. You will the uh, odometer will not show you direction it will only show you the number that how much distance you have traveled so here this distance is a scalar quantity 
distance is a scalar quantity while displacement in which you need to find your initial and final position. Now to find your initial, initial and final position you need to consider the direction. So here home is your initial position. Now suppose you are here. So this is your F. So this is your final position. So here you need to consider the direction that from your initial position where is my final position. Suppose you are here. So you need to consider this line. So, so here you need to consider the direction. So displacement is a vector quantity. So let us try to again understood. See suppose here this is your origin original position and it is stated as 0. Now you started moving towards right side and suppose you have moved 2 kilometer. So now you are moving towards right side. So the distance travel is 2 kilometer as you are moving in a straight line. So in this case your initial and final position lie in the same line. So your distance and displacement are same. Both are 2 kilometer because it is the shortest distance between the initial and final position and again you have traveled the same distance. Suppose after covering 2 kilometer you are returning back and you are here. So now this is your final position and which is let us say here which is 1 kilometer from your initial position. So here the net distance covered is 2 plus 1 that is 3 kilometer. But what is the displacement? It is the shortest distance between the initial and final position. So here I and F. So here 1 kilometer is your displacement. Now again from this line you are moving towards this side which is 3 kilometer which is towards the left. Now left of this we consider as a negative. So here in this case your displacement is not towards the right. So you need to, if, if you are indicating the distances towards the right as a positive numbers, then you need to indicate the distances towards the left as a negative number. So here you are traveling towards this side. So here your displacement, what is your initial position? 0. What is your final position? Minus 3. So here the displacement is minus 3. But if you are traveling in a bike, you will find that the odometer will read 0 to 2, 2 kilometer plus it will add again, again you are coming here. So 2 kilometers, so 2 plus 2, 4 kilometer, then again you are going here. So 4 plus 3, 7 kilometers. So that odometer in the bike will read 7 kilometers, right? So it, it does not consider any displacement, it, it just any direction, it just considered how much path you have traveled. So you have traveled 2 plus 2 plus 3. 7 kilometer. So that is your distance. You have traveled that much distance. But <coughs> this displacement will show you the direction. That is your the distance between the initial and final position is 3. But in which direction? Towards the left. Now to indicate the direction you need to put the minus sign. So here your displacement is negative. It is minus 3. Here your displacement was 0 and here your displacement was positive. Right. So, in all this condition you are indicating the direction plus magnitude. So, displacement is a vector quantity and third, fourth point that it is always positive, distance is always positive while distance, sorry displacement, distance is always positive. Displacement may be negative, positive or 0. All these conditions are possible. Then the magnitude, the magnitude of the displacement, right? If you are moving in a straight line, then in that case, your initial and final positions are same and distance and displacement both are same. So here, the distance and displacement are equal. That condition is possible when the object is traveling in a straight line. Now suppose the object return back on the same line. So in that condition, the distance, suppose it is here. So 2 plus 2, 4 kilometer, again returning back. So in that condition, your distance travel is 4 kilometer, 2 kilometer going here and again returning. So distance travel is 4 kilometer while the displacement is 0. 
So in all these cases, you will observe that the magnitude of the displacement will never be greater than the magnitude of the distance travel. Yani distance hai wo har bar ya to displacement ke jitna hoga ya to bada hoga. Lekin jo displacement hai wo kabhi bhi distance se zyada nahi ho sakta. Right? Either it may be equal when it is moving in a straight line in the same direction. So, distance and displacement are equal. right? But the displacement will never be greater than distance travel. So, we can write here that displacement is maybe less than or equal to distance travel. right? So, these are the points that need to be remembered. Here you can write that distance travel is greater than or equal to displacement. Now, let us try to discuss the concept of velocity and speed. So, after that I will uh, give you some examples. So, you can practice that what are the displacement, distance, how to find. right? So, now let us try it. Now, let us try to discuss this concept of velocity and speed. After that, I will guide you how to solve the examples related to distance, displacement, velocity and speed. Now, let us try to discuss these two terms speed and velocity. Speed term you are using in your day to day life. Suppose you are saying that that car is moving very fast with a speed of 110 km per hour. That bike is moving very fast with a speed of 100 km per hour. So, what you are telling you are moving you are saying that that car is covering a distance of 100 kilometer or 110 kilometer in an hour. It is moving very fast. So, you are talking about speed. So, speed is a distance traveled by an object per unit time. For example, you are moving, you are traveling from your home to somewhere okay, and that place is 100 kilometer from your home. And suppose you have just taken 2 r to complete that distance, then what is your speed? What was your average speed? So, the total distance travel is 100 kilometer and time taken is 2 r. So, it is 100 kilometer by 2. So, it is 50 kilometer per hour. So, your average speed you have covered 50 kilometer every hour. So, that is your speed. Similarly, what is displacement? What is uh, velocity? You have to stick to the definition. Velocity means displacement per unit time. So, here if you are moving in a straight line, for example, you are here and then you are moving on a straight line path, suppose it is 100 kilometer and again you have taken the same time 2 r. So, in this case, your velocity is total displacement, initial and final position, displacement is 100 kilometer total time taken is 2 r. So, what is your velocity? It is again same 50 kilometer per hour. Now, suppose you are returning back to the home. You are returning back to the home and again you have taken 2 r to reach the home. So, again you are traveling the same distance 100 kilometer. So, what is the total distance travel? 100 in this case again you are traveling back. So, what is the total distance travel? 100 plus 100 200 kilometer right and how much time you have taken? So, 2 plus 2 4 hour. So, again your average speed is 50 kilometer per hour right. But what is your velocity? See when you, whenever you are returning back to your home your final and initial position are same that is your displacement is 0 and when your displacement is 0, so your velocity is also 0. So, the velocity depends on the displacement and the speed depends upon the distance. So, speed is a scalar quantity, speed is a scalar quantity because here you do not need to describe its direction, you just travel 400, you just travel 200 kilometer, total distance travel 200 kilometer, in which direction you have travel that need not to be discussed, right. And how much time you have taken, so total distance travel is 200, total time taken is 
4 hour so the your speed your average speed is 50 km per hour but here in this case you need to determine the direction the direction of your displacement and that direction of displacement is the direction of your velocity so suppose this is your home instead of moving towards this side you are moving towards this side suppose these displacements are positive and these displacements are negative and suppose you have completed a distance of 100 meter just a 100 meter and you have taken to complete that distance for example you are moving in a cycle so suppose to travel that 100 meter distance you have just uh, taken the time of uh, just you are running let us assume that 20 seconds right here you are moving towards left side so your displacement is negative so here what is the velocity velocity is displacement per unit time what is displacement minus 100 meter what is time taken 20 second so your velocity is minus see minus 5 meter per second but if you consider your speed then you, your speed is only 5 meter per second here during discussion of the speed we are not considering the direction of the object we are just considering the total path travel either in this direction in this direction how much total path travel by the object and how much time total time it had taken right so that is the speed so speed is a scalar quantity while this uh, displacement is a vector quantity to represent the displacement or we can say to represent the vector quantity we put a arrow here which is actually not given in your textbook but this arrow represents that the uh, given quantity is a vector quantity we are representing force as a f but to say that that quantity is a vector quantity we put a arrow on it right so here v means here vector vector v is a vector quantity it's a velocity and v which is a speed is a scalar quantity and so this is a vector quantity what is the unit to measure we measure it in meter per second sorry for the bad handwritings so next time i will maintain so here it is a scalar quantity here it is a vector quantity then this unit the si unit si unit means international units is meter per second and kilometer per hour generally this is the si unit and this is the practical unit kilometer per hour it's a practical unit practical units means we, we are using in day to day life but meter per second is a si unit it's a international unit internationally accepted everywhere in scientific measurements we consider meter per second again the same unit meter per second this speed may be zero if the object is at rest it may be zero but it is never negative so speed is always always positive and never negative but this velocity may be positive negative or zero then fifth the speed if the object is traveling in a straight line then distance and displacement are same in this condition speed and velocity are same but if the object is returning back then speed increases because distance increases you are going 2 kilometer 5 kilometer that side then again coming 5 kilometer so your total distance covered is 10 kilometer but displacement is zero so in that case your uh, speed and velocity differs but if they are moving in a straight line then speed and velocity are same when the object is coming back the speed increases while the velocity decreases so here the speed is greater than or equal to velocity when they are equal when the object is traveling in a straight line and here we can say velocity is always less than or equal to speed okay so these are the points that to that need to be discussed now let us try to solve some of the numericals based on the speed velocity 
distance and displacement and then we will discuss about acceleration suppose a person is moving on a square field and the length of each side is 10 meter he takes let us say he takes uh, he completes he starts from a and reach to position c he starts from a and reach to position c then what are its distance and displacement so what is distance distance is generally symbolized as s okay so distance travel is total path length so 10 meter plus 10 meter is equals to 20 meter so the total distance travel is 20 meter but what is the distance in this case what is the distance in this case the distance sorry displacement what is the displacement in this case displacement is here this is the initial position and this is the final position the shortest path or we can say the straight line joining the initial and the final position so this is your displacement you have displaced by this distance from your original position so what is this if you use the pythagoras theorem then this is your hypotenuse so here if i say ac square or ac is equals to under root ab square that is 10 square plus 10 square is equals to 2 into 10 square is equals to root 2 into 10 so this is your displacement and this is your distance now suppose if i ask you if the person takes 5 seconds if the person takes 5 seconds to reach here then what is its speed and what is its velocity so here let us say uh, speed v speed v is equals to what is distance travel how much distance travel 20 kilometer what is time taken the time taken is 5 seconds so it is 4 meter per second so the speed is 4 meter per second now what about the velocity so velocity is equals to displacement by time what is the displacement here the displacement is 10 root 2 by 5 so it is 2 root 2 2 root 2 2 root 2 right it is 2 root 2 so 2 root 2 meter per second okay so these are the concept based numericals of speed and velocity many other numericals are given but that we will discuss in the exercise part that is the last video of this chapter so now let me give you another example suppose the person is moving in a circular path and the radius of this path is for our convenience to make it easy let us say 100 meter right if the person starts from this a position and reach to position b then in that case what are the distance and displacement see what are distance distance means this total path length right so distance s is equals to see if the person suppose travel the whole circle then this whole circle has a length of 2 pi r that is the circumference of the circle but he has traveled the half so we need to divide it by 2 because he has traveled only half circle so divided by 2 so it is pi means 3.14 into radius is given 100 so it is 314 meter now what is the displacement it is the shortest path between the initial and the final position so this is the initial and this is the final so this 100 plus 100 this diameter is the displacement of the person so displacement represented by arrow just our convenience we can identify that it is a displacement so it is 200 meter now suppose the person comes here then this whole path that is 3 by 4 of the 2 pi r that so uh, 3 by 4 of the 2 pi r is the distance covered and this is the displacement shortest path 
and when the person returned back the displacement is zero because the initial and final position are same but the distance covered the odometer will show that the distance covered is 2 pi r right 2 pi r that is into 2 that is 6 4 6 to 8 meter r radius is given 100 right so 2 pi r means 6 to 8 meter so i hope you have understood the concept of speed and velocity many other questions are there but that we will discuss at the end so we can discuss maximum number of topics now before understanding the term acceleration we need to understand the conversion how to convert kilometer per hour speed into meter per second it's a very easy right for example suppose a car is traveling at speed of 100 kilometer let us say for our convenience to make it easy uh, let us say the car is traveling at a speed of 90 kilometer per hour okay it is actually h you cannot write h r so here 90 kilometer per hour but in meter per second what will be its speed so simple 90 what is kilometer kilometer kilo means thousand here meter as it is in one hour how many seconds are there in one hour in one minute we have 60 seconds and in one hour we have 16 minutes so 60 60 60 60 we need to add 60 times so it is 3600 seconds so in one hour we have 3600 seconds so if you solve this you will get 90 into here 2 18 and 2 5 so 5 by 18 meter per second so we have converted so if any term if you want to convert from kilometer per hour to meter per second so instead of being all this mass we can just multiply that term with 5 by 18 so here 18 phaisa so 25 meter per second that is if the object is moving with a speed of 90 kilometer per hour so we can say that it is moving with 25 meter per second so it is 25 meter per second now let us see some more conversions now let us see some more conversion that is suppose the object is moving with a speed of 108 kilometer per hour then how you will convert directly 108 into 5 by 18 5 by 18 meter per second so here it is 18 6 108 so it is 30 meter per second very simple let us try to convert 72 kilometer per hour so it is 72 into 5 by 18 so here uh, 72 so 18 forza so 4 fiza 20 meter per second another let us say we have 36 kilometer per hour so 36 kilometer per hour means 36 into 5 by 18 so it is 10 meter per second so it's a very easy conversion now suppose if you want to convert this 20 meter per second into kilometer per hour then you just do the reverse multiple so 20 into here here you have multiplied 5 by 18 just reverse it reciprocal it so it is 18 by 5 so now you multiply this you will get see 5 4 za, 18 for the 72 kilometer per hour so if you want to convert the term from kilometer per hour to meter per second you multiply it with 5 by 18 but if you want to convert the term from meter per second to kilometer per hour you multiply it with 18 by 5 so by using this we will understand the term acceleration because whenever there is uh, acceleration given in the question or acceleration appears in the question you need to convert all the given quantities either into meter if the length or a distance or displacement is there then you then you need to convert it into meter if the time is given in r then you have to convert it into second if the velocity or speed is given in kilometer per hour then you then you need to convert it into meter per second so it is very important
okay so now let us try to understand acceleration now to understand the term acceleration you need to imagine a situation suppose you have started from your home and on starting from your home your speed or let us say your velocity is 0 meter per second then in 2 second right let us say interval of 1 second then in 1 second you have accelerated and you have acquired the velocity of 2 meter per second then in another second your velocity changes to 4 meter per second then in another second your velocity changes to 6 meter per second then in another second the velocity changes to 8 meter per second so here per second what is the change in your velocity per second what is the change in the velocity that is called the acceleration so here per second your velocity changes by 2 meter then after 1 second plus 2 meter that is 4 meter per second again after 1 second plus 2 meter per second 6 meter per second so per second your velocity increases by 2 2 2 2 so that is called the acceleration so we can say that the acceleration of this car or this object or this bike is 2 meter per second square another example suppose you have started from somewhere else on the road and you are moving again you have started from 0 meter per second then in suppose 2 second you uh, you have uh, acquired a velocity of 3 meter per second then in another 2 second you have acquired the velocity of 6 meter per second then in another 2 second you have acquired the velocity of 9 meter per second so what is the change in the velocity here at every 2 seconds your velocity changes by 3 unit so in the first 2 second you have acquired 3 meter per second in the another 2 second you have acquired 6 meter per second in the another 2 second you have acquired 9 meter per second but what is the change per second what is the change in the velocity per second the change in the velocity per second is 1.5 so in 2 seconds it changes to 3 meter per second then in 1 second it changes to half that is 1.5 meter per second. So change in velocity per second is termed as acceleration. So here your acceleration A is equals to 1.5 meter per second square. Okay. Now let us again try to take some more examples so you can understand this concept clearly. So suppose you are starting from your home and you acquire velocity of 20 meter per second in 4 seconds. Then what will be your acceleration? So now let us try to define the acceleration that is it is the rate of change of velocity. What is acceleration? It is the rate of change of velocity. Rate means how fast. Right? Rate with, the, with respect to time. How fast an object is changing its velocity see not acquiring velocity changing its velocity if the object is changing its velocity then we can say that the object is accelerating so here if the object is changing its velocity then we can say that the rate of change of velocity is termed as acceleration and in numerical way we can say that acceleration is equals to change in velocity per unit time so change in velocity change in velocity means it is final velocity minus initial velocity by time so a is equals to v v means final velocity minus u u means initial velocity and t means time so this is the formula of acceleration so now if you want to find the acceleration of any quantity any object you can just use this formula where v stands for final velocity u stands for initial velocity and t that is time so in this case a is equals to your initial velocity is 0 and final velocity is 20 minus initial velocity is 0 by time taken 4 seconds so it is 20 by 4 which is 5 meter per second square 
when meter per second square is the SI unit of acceleration. See, what is A is equals to V minus U by T. So, here V minus U both are velocities and the unit of velocity is meter per second and unit of time is second. So, this will go up the, then the SI unit of velocity is SI unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So, here the acceleration of this object is 5 meter per second square. That is the object is increasing its velocity by 5 meter per second. Okay. The object is increasing its velocity by 5 meter per second every second. So, in the first second the speed is 5 meter per second. In the another second it increases by 5. So, 10 meter per second. In the third second, its velocity again increases by 5 and in the fourth second, finally its speed will be 20 meter per second. Now, let us try to understand what is retardation. See, if the speed of an object increases, then we call it an acceleration or positive acceleration. Now, what if the velocity of the object decreases? Then in that condition, we call it as a negative acceleration or we can say it is a retardation. So, suppose an object is moving with a velocity of 25 meter per second, then the object applies brake. So, after applying brake, the uh, person or that object acquired the velocity of 5 meter per second. So, what is the initial velocity here? It is u is equals to 25 meter per second. What is the final velocity? The final velocity is v is equals to 5 meter per second. So, on applying the brake, suppose the person stops in 4 seconds. It takes 4 seconds to stop. In that case, a is equals to v minus u by t. So, what is final velocity? 5. What is initial velocity? What is initial velocity? 25. What is time taken? 4. So, it is 5 minus 25 minus 20 by 4. It is minus 5 meter per second square. That is the, that this object decreases, decreases its speed by 5 every second. So, initially it was at 25. So, after 1 second its speed decreases by 5. So, it is in 1 second its speed decreases by 5. So, it is 20. Another second again decreases by, by 15 in the, this first, second, third second it is decreases by 5. So, again 10 and in the fourth second finally its speed will be 5 meter per second. So, this negative acceleration is known as retardation. If the object applying brake or its speed decreases then we call the object is moving with a negative acceleration or we can say that it is retarding. So, I, I hope you have understood the concept of acceleration. There are other numericals and questions given in your textbook related to acceleration. The concept remains same, just the data changes. For example, if the speed is given in kilometer per hour, for example, let us say the object is moving with a speed of uh, 72 kilometer per hour and applies brake. So, it is an initial speed and applies brake and acquire velocity of 18 mid 18 or we can say 36 kilometer per hour. So, first you need to convert, let us say it take 2 seconds. So, the initial speed in meter per second, see whenever you are finding acceleration you need to convert it into meter per second. So, if you convert this 72 5 by 18 meter per second, so it is 20 meter per second and if you convert this then 36 into 5 by 18 so it is 10 meter per second so what is the acceleration a is equals to v minus u by t so what is v 10 what is u 20 and what is time taken 2 seconds so 10 minus 20 minus 10 by 2 so it is minus 5 meter per second square so, every time minus 5 will not come. I am just making numericals like that. So, you can understand easily. Okay. So, I hope you have understood all the uh, topic. But if you have any query, you can give me suggestions in the comments. So, I can make another video depending on your suggestions. 
and in the next video we are going to discuss about uniform and non uniform motion and uh, the graph that uh, that is the graphical representation of the motions have a nice day